This is the story about an ancient substance that could melt rock and built King Solomon's temple. The Shamir or the Shamira? Was it a long lost forgotten creature? A deadly radioactive isotope that could melt rock? Or a piece of off-world technology? Hey guys and welcome back. <laughs> this morning I woke up rather early being an older person and watched The History of Sandpaper by the 3M Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company all about abrasive materials. It was really fascinating. <laughs> but in their ancient history of sandpaper they talked about this creature, the Shamira, a mythical beast that could melt or sand rock and was used to build King Solomon's temple. The ancients said it was the size of a barley corn. A barley corn is a grain of barley, rather small, and they thought it was a creature whose gaze could melt the hardest material. And this is really interesting. In the ancient myth, it was kept in a box of wool surrounded by lead. I think this is a big clue. This precious stuff in the box was protected by the hoopy bird. We have them in our garden. I must ask them next time I see one. So when King Solomon said, I want to build a giant temple, his religious advisor said, you need a shamir that will cut the rock. And he went, go out yonder and find me the shamir. And they did. <laughs> I like this storytelling. And they brought back this lead box full of wool with a barley corn inside it that its gaze, and this is very interesting, its very gaze when placed on rock would sever it in a straight line. What's going on here? Now I digress. So every month YouTube send me a report that says your films are less popular than normal. You need to do trending subject. Oh, F off. I'm doing films about ancient sandpaper and string vests and the history of Velcro. That's much better. I don't want to be trending. I don't even know what trending is. I want to do for you films about mythical cryptozoology worms that can eat rock. I think that's far more interesting. And if you do too, please subscribe. We're nearly 100,000 subscribers. Let's make that happen as soon as possible. Maybe Christmas. Whoa, who knows? So like and subscribe and turn on your notifications and you'll get weird films about worms that eat rocks. Mm. So back to the Shamir. Was it a creature or was it a piece of radioactive isotope mineral that could disrupt the bonds of hard matter and cut through like a laser beam. I like the second theory, but in the Middle Ages, they found the worm, this guy. But this is not the Shamir. This is actually a well-known carpenter worm. Back in the Middle Ages, if you were a shipbuilder, the worst thing that could happen to you is that you got an attack of ship boring worms and they would eat through hard oak. They even do eat through stone very slowly. And a German scientist and illustrator found these worms and called it the Shamir only after King Solomon's mythical stone cutting living wool surrounded by lead mineral creature. So as I do, just for you. I like to tell you a personal story. So I used to live near Cambridge in England. In fact, near a town called Royston. Royston and Baldock, they're in Hertfordshire, are some of the oldest towns in England. They date way back, long before the Anglos and Saxons. They go back into Stone Age or pagan times. And one day, under a house in the city village of Royston, a builder found a well in his basement. Nothing unusual really about having a water source in your basement, but the well was dry and it seemed beautifully cut. Straight sides, the size of a man, 
So he built a winch and he lowered himself down in this perfectly cut, smooth sized tunnel, I think for about 20 feet. And then it opens up into this bell shaped jar cavern. This is now the Royston Cave. Have a look at this. People think that this cave is truly ancient, way old. Some of the carvings on the wall are very pre-Christian or pagan. And then on the surface, there's crucifixions and Knights Templar stuff, which obviously came later. It was probably used as a secret hiding space. But the actual building of the cave and its origin predates Christianity. But it has an amazing legend. The legend said it was built by a Shamir. Well, hang on. The Shamir was the rock-cutting weird mineral that lives in wool in a lead box that King Solomon used to build his temple. How come it's in Royston? Well, we don't know. But when I looked and lived in the Royston area and went into this cave, you can see that the rock is fused. The tunnel leading down is perfectly circular. And strangely, the walls look like they've been bored out by tiny nano worms. And that could be the Shamir. So what the crap is it? How does it eat rock? This is a piece of rock from Dordogneshire. It's limestone um, and there's no worms in it. Of course, one day I'm going to get rock eating worms here in our water mill. It's just going to be something I'll have to face up to. <laughs> but what could the Shamir really be? It could be a rock-eating worm. You know my theory on the ancient building of temples where things seem to be miraculous and large, and how did they do it? They must have had alien intervention. Well, they didn't. They had time. So it could have been a worm that nibbled away at King Solomon's temple. But let's look at another aspect. I think a fascinating aspect of this legend, that it was a tiny piece of stuff. And King Solomon said its glance cut through rock. I mean, a glance cutting through rock? That sounds like a laser. And it needed to be kept inside wool in a lead box. That makes it sound highly radioactive, possibly. So I'm really not into cryptozoology. That's the science of big... No, I'm not. I'm really not. I'm into physics and science and how do rocks work. So what is the Shamir? Is it a rock-eating worm? Or is it an ancient mineral? that can actually melt rock? I don't know. Do you? Let me know in the comments below. Because of you, the truth is out there.